and we will start to run about the prophets and kings, right? So who is a prophet? Who knows? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, God always um, say something to people through prophet. Okay, that is a prophet. All right. Okay, let's start um, today's sermon. So before starting today's message, I have a question for you. So please look at here. So, so what word comes to your mind when you look at these pictures? So what word? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Yeah. They're naked and they won't. Oh my God. They have a competition, right? So, do you think that looks fair or no. unfair? Unfair. Unfair. Genius. Good job. Oh. Right. <laughs> do you think he can win him? No. 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 Right. Never. This is the password. Right. Yeah. So it is, it is very important to play fair when competing, right? So, in today's sermon, I will tell you a story about unfair competition from the Bible, right? So, but let us find out why Israel people had to have such an unfair competition first. So, can you remember what happened to Israel after King Solomon sinned against God? What happened last week? I told you. Uh, yeah. Um, his son took over, and his kingdom divided into two pieces. They took what? His son took over, and it divided into two pieces. Sure. No. What happened to Israel? Because some of the kids What happened? Israel was. Israel was one, right? But after he sinned, God made Israel divided in two. You remember that, right? Yes. You do not need to memorize um which which tribes go to northern and which um uh, which tribes belong to southern. But you need to be members. God made Israel. God punished them so by dividing in two. Do you understand? Right? So where Solomon's son ruled over? Northern or Southern? Southern. Southern, right. So do you remember his name? David? 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 Oh no. David, no, not yet. Uh, David is Solomon's dad. <laughs> right. Who? Rehoboam. Rehoboam is Solomon's son, so he took over the, this part, and then Solomon's officials took this part, okay? So there are 10 tribes, and there is only two tribes. Okay, let's go. So, do you remember what the king Solomon's sin was? So what did he do? What did he do? Oh, winner? Huh? Yeah, just, yeah, good. But what I, I mentioned, what I told you. Um, he used a different kind of women for other countries and worship other gods. Good job. Wow, perfect. How many wives? 1,000. 1,000, yeah. Why do you remember just only that number? It's okay. Right. So Solomon's sin is was so King Solomon was said to worship other gods that his wives believed in their countries. So even he accept to worship other gods that his wives believed, he built the temples for other gods. He made God angry. So the nation so the nation Israel became divided. Okay? So remember that. And 
Here is Ahab. So Ahab was the man who later became the king of the land of Israel. So he was an evil king because he made the same mistake as Solomon. So he married with Jezebel, who was a princess from other nations. So she was a wicked wife because she worshipped a god by the name of Baal. And she brought prophets from her home country and persuaded King Ahab to build temples for Baal in the land of Israel. So Ahab and his wicked wife Jezebel led the people, Israel people, away from worship of true God and into the worship of idols. Can you see that? Right. So at this sad time in Israel's history, only few people, just only few people worship the true God. Right. So sad. So Eliza, have you ever heard that name? Eliza, a prophet. Yeah, it's a great prophet. So he was a great prophet of God. He tried to warn the people that they were worshiping wrong God beside the true God. So he told them that God would take away the rain so that they would learn that he was only true God. However, Ahab and Jezebel did not return to God. But they tried to kill Eliza and all of the other prophets of God. Yeah, they tried to kill all of the God's prophets. So most prophets of God were killed at the time. The thing, the things King Ahab and Jezebel did made God angry. Right. So God caused a drought. Yeah. So for three years, no rain fell in the land. The lakes and rivers dried up. People could not grow crops in the fields. The drought made life very, very hard. So after three years of the no rain, the Lord, the true God, decided it was time for Elijah to talk to King Ahab again. So when, when King Ahab met Elijah, he said this with anger, You are a troublemaker. You caused the rain to go away. It is your fault that you, we have had a drought. Eliza replied to him, No, King Ahab, you caused the drought. It was because you stopped worshipping the Lord. The Lord knows that you and your wife Jezebel worship false gods. You make idols and bow down before them. You believe that there are other gods named Baal, but you are wrong. So there is only one true God. He is the Lord God. He is the only true God. All of the others are just made up by human. Yes, Elijah said that. Ahab did not listen to God's messenger, but called Elijah the troublemaker and angry to him again. So Eliza was in danger, but he was not afraid of anything because he knew that God protected him. Right? So, children, listen carefully. Sometimes, the people who are willing to stand up for what is right, like Eliza, will be called troublemaker. In other words, if you live as a Christian, true Christian, sometimes someone would think or call you the troublemaker. For example, your friend is having a birthday party on Sunday, mon Sunday morning and invited you. But if you say, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot attend because I have to go to church. If you say like that, some people understand you, but some might say you are a troublemaker, right? It happened to your, your life. 
I know it is not good to feel when someone calls us the troublemaker, but no matter how others call us, if God hates, we should not do something wrong. Right? Because if we do something so wrong, God has no choice but to punish us so that we can restore our relationship with God. So Elijah suggested that they should have a competition to prove who the real God was. So he suggests that each of us build an altar that was able to place an animal sacrifice and then pray to all their God to light a fire for the sacrifice. So the God who could send a fire for a sacrifice was the true God. So Elijah said, Gather all of the people and all of the prophets of Baal and mountain comer to see whose God is real. So King Ahab did as, as Elijah said. The people from all over Israel came to watch the competition. So it did not really seem like a fair contest because Elijah was the only one prophet of God there. But there were 450 prophets of the first God bar. Elijah spoke to all the people. Everyone needs to make a decision today. If bar is real, then you need to worship him. If the Lord God is real, then you should worship him, true God. So the prophets of Baal agreed to the competition because they thought it was a good condition for them, right? So they made their altar and they danced and they prayed to cry out to Baal. But nothing happened to the sacrifice on their altar. They cried even louder and louder, but still there was no answer. Nothing happened. Next, it was Elijah's turn. He built altar to God. He used 12 stones to make it, and then he placed the sacrifice on the, on the altar. Then Elijah did something very unusual. He asked for four large of jars of water and had them poured over the altar. Then he did it again and then again. There was so much water that it soaked the sacrifice and all the wood on the altar. So do you think the dry trees spun better or the wet trees spun better? Dry trees? Right, of course. Of course, dry trees spawn better. Right? But Eliza poured water on the trees. So why did Eliza make the competition so unfair? Why? Because he wants to show that nothing matters if God does. Right? So Eliza prayed to God. I pray to you, Lord, because you are the only God. Please show all of these people here today that you are real. Please send down fire and burn this sacrifice. Then an amazing thing happened. Fire came down out of the sky and burned the sacrifice. But the amazing things did not stop there. The fire was so powerful that it burned the wood, the stones, and the dust on the altar. So there was nothing left. Wow. So now everyone knew that the Lord was the only true God. So they bowed down and kept saying, the Lord he is God, the Lord, He is God. All together, the sky grew dark with clouds and God sent a great rain, finally. 
to the Lord and be the truth and prove that He is the only one true God. Right? So now, do you understand why there, there was unfair competition? Right? Do you think it was because Eliza had to fight 450 prophets alone? Do you think it was because Elijah poured water over the altar? No. The competition was not game in favor of Baal's prophets. Because there was no God in the world who could compete with true God from the beginning. Do you understand? In other words, Eliza, who had a true God on his side, was an advantageous game. Right. So, do you understand? So, yes. If you are with God, you can always play a game of advantage. So, be with God. Be with God. Right? Yes, please. Next week, let's continue to talk about what happened to Eliza and the people, right? Okay, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us be your children. Thank you for loving us and being with us. We believe that you are only one true God, and we pray that we would worship you alone, because you are only true God. Please help us to have a strong faith, even though people call us the troublemakers when we obey to you. Please let us love you most in the world. Dear God, we brought a small offering here. Please bless them and use them for your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Spaces for 